All right, finally, let's talk about Maxwell. Maxwell was a Scottish scientist uh, who died at a really young age. And he was seen as one of the most influential people. Uh, well, at least not initially, but his relationships connected thermodynamics to many other spots in physics and in chemistry. Um, the, as we write these things out and we discover these things, it might not seem like it's that big of a deal. But whoops, as you get further into like quantum electrodynamics or electricity and magnetism and so on, these are all heavily involved. And wherever you have electricity or electrons moving, wherever you have an electric field, what else do you always have coupled with it? So if you have an electric field, what other field is generated? Yep, you always have those two together. And a lot of the stuff that Maxwell worked with at the time, he was kind of just messing around with the math of thermodynamics because it was the time of the steam engine. It was really cool. People were trying to make efficiencies. And then what people realized is, is holy crap, this has a lot more deeper connections to it. So let's talk about the Maxwell relations. Okay, if we think of the natural variables, which are the easiest to measure? Yep. What else? Yep. What else? Volume. Yep. Those are the easiest. Moles, are moles easy to measure? No, they are when it's like a solid, right? Or a liquid where you know you have what you have. Gases, it's really tough. Okay. Can be easily measured. Excluding moles. What's the other natural variable we need? Entropy. Is entropy easy to measure? No. S is more difficult. We don't have an entropy stick where we can just poke it in something and say, yep, this is the level of entropy. All the other ones we kind of do. However, sometimes experimental setups make it impossible to measure temperature, pressure, or volume. Right? Like, depending on what experiment you're looking at, if you think of the bomb calorimeter, we really can't measure temperature directly on the inside of that bomb because we have a thermometer in there. We have really high pressures. There's an explosion basically going on. We'll melt the thing. So sometimes, it is impossible. measure or set up volume, temperature, and or pressure due to experimental setup. So if you hit a situation, you just give up at that point. Maybe, yeah. You don't have to, though. Everybody was giving up at that point, but Maxwell didn't. He saw a connection in the mathematics that other people didn't. Um, a lot of times, these people who come up with fundamental things, they stare at something, they have no idea how to do the mathematics, they go over and bug a mathematician for a couple of weeks, and the mathematician's like, yeah, why didn't you know this? And then uh, the scientist creates all the mathematics and symbols to figure it out. It happens a lot, in, or happened a lot in quantum mechanics. It'll happen a lot here, too. 
So, question I'm going to pose to you. Is there a way to solve for this ugly differential? without ever actually measuring s. What do you think? Is there a way to do it? Yes, there is. You're probably thinking, yes, there is, because why would we be talking about it if there weren't? You're right. And how do you think we're going to do it? Yeah, using that stuff and part of the Maxwell relationships. Okay, the way that the Maxwell relationships were determined was through exact differentials. Do we want a review of exact differentials? Anybody want a review? Okay, so If I have that function there, what's df equal to? Yep. 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 Times, yep, plus, uh huh, yep, holding what constant? Why? <coughs> okay, if we wanted to show this was an exact differential, what do we have to do? We got to relate these two things to one another, right? They will have to be equal, but what do I got to do to these things first? Yep, what's the partial of this one going to be? Yep, only what constant? Yep, and then I made this too small. What's this one going to be? Yep. Holding what constant? Why? Okay. Let's look at a more chemical example or more physical example. is the following. Expression considered an exact differential.
Okay, we'll solve this one and then we'll be done for the day. Let's get it to look a little bit more like this. What's another way we could represent dt? Does that help? What's got to go here? Mm -hmm. Over partial of what? Yep, holding what constant? Yep. What about over here? Mm hmm. So, what can we get out of this? What's that equal to? Yep. And what about that partial? Yep. Okay. What do we need to show for this to be an exact differential? Yeah, so we got to relate these two things to one another. And Lily, you said, take the opposite differential, right? Yep. And what about this guy? Yep. Okay, let's figure out what each of these things looks like. That looks ugly. Any way to make it better? I see the head signals from Tessa over there because her voice hurts. What do you know, Tessa? Yeah. Let's plug in P over R. And what are we holding constant in this case? Hey, look at that. Finally, an easy differential. What's this equal to? <laughs> yeah, one over R. What about, now we gotta find the other one, right? I'm covering up right now. How can we simplify that one? Yep. And what's being held constant in this case? Yep. What's that going to be equal to? Yep. Okay, therefore, is this an exact differential? Yep. dt. And what does that say about that function again? Yep. Well, we already knew that, right? Okay. Next time, we're going to look at a situation. We wanted to try and figure out what was it? The 
ds dv holding what constant? D. That differential looks like it will suck to measure and to differentiate. Can we find another scenario where we can utilize this and get to something better? The answer is yes, we're going to be able to. But that's for next time. Okay, so what we covered today was is uh, all the all the different um, state functions in terms of natural variables, how to look at these partial differentials, remembering a little bit about exact differentials, okay, and showing how you can relate these these weird partials to other properties. Okay, are there any questions about anything we talked about today? I don't know about you, this feels always a lot of fun to me because it's just like swap things around, do some simple stuff. Um, it's like puzzle solving. It, I don't know, people either tend to really love it or hate it. Okay, hopefully you love it. All right, have a good day, guys.